welcome to another edition of What's New in the Library. So today I come to you with some exciting news. There is a new list of books in the state of Missouri. So you know how we have Mark Twain and Truman Award nominees. Well, now there's a whole other category, and it's called the Dogwood Books. So Dogwood is Missouri's state tree, so that's why it's called the Dogwood. And these books are all completely nonfiction, so they're all true books. So I like nonfiction books, but sometimes students are kind of like, meh, they're too long or they're too difficult. Well, there's a bunch of students and Missouri, and Missouri librarians and teachers that have gotten together and figured out what some really good books are. They've kind of narrowed it down from the thousands of nonfiction books that are published every year and made a list that you all would actually like and they're the dogwood books. So I got that information about a couple weeks ago and I printed off the list and I already had some here in the library which is really exciting. So I want to show you what some of those are. So the first book I'm going to tell you about that is on the Dogwood list is called Born to Fly, the first women's air race across America. So this book, even though it looks like it's fiction, it is actually nonfiction. It's longer than some nonfiction is, but don't be scared of it because in the back here, a whole big old chunk is nothing but notes that the author wrote about um, when they were writing the book. So the actual text of the book is not there's not that much there, so don't be afraid of it. Even though it looks really thick and it looks like it would take a long time to read, don't be afraid of it. So this book is by Steve Scheinkin, and he's written quite a few other nonfiction books that are really popular. So there's a couple of them. We have these in the library too, so you have to check those out. But this is pretty cool. It's about um, women's aviation. And in the 1930s, how there was this big race in America. They started in California and went all the way to New York. And it was a race. And it was only for women pilots, which was a really big deal back in the day because um, flying was kind of new. And women that were pilots, women that flew, was like really, really rare. And so this competition was only for women and they raced in their airplanes to see who could make it there first. So there's some really good stories in here. Um, it's probably the most famous person in here you'll learn about is Amelia Earhart. That's her on the cover here. And there's a bunch of other women pilots that deserve attention too. So you should check this out. It is located in the nonfiction section in the 700s. The next one that was on the dogwood list that I want to tell you about <clears throat> is called Seashells, More Than a Home. So when you first look at this book, you're like, Miss Otto, that's a picture book. That's for little kids. Not always. Picture books have a lot of information in them. So you can't just look at the pictures. Like when you were little, that's probably what you did with picture books. But you have to read the information in here. So it has charts and diagrams and information. This one happens to be all about seashells. So this is located in the 500s, and it was also on the dogwood list. Another one on the dogwood is called Torpedoed, but I'm going to come back to this one. I want to tell you about this one in a little bit. It's really good. These next two are not on the dogwood list, but I want to tell you about them. They're brand new picture books that I got in. And again, you're like, really, picture books? No, really, picture books. You guys should be excited about this. So this one is really cool. It's called Dazzle Ships, and it's, of course, true because it's nonfiction. And it's all about in World War I when ships kept getting bombed or torpedoed and how they, the it was the British Army, the UK Army, they were trying to figure out how to keep ships safe because they needed those ships to bring supplies like food and war supplies to the country because in, um. England, the United Kingdom, it's an island, and so they needed ships to get in, and so they needed those ships to be safe to bring supplies to them. So their solution was to kind of camouflage the ships, but instead of like straight up camo like you think of, like hunting camo, they painted them these really cool designs. They called them dazzle ships. So if you look at it, again, there's a lot of words on these pages. You have to actually read it. It's not like a little kid's picture book. Let me see if I can show you a cool picture of what one of the ships looked like. So you can kind of see how they were camouflaged, but with like kind of squiggly lines and bright patterns or black and white. And this is a true story. Um, you should Google Dazzle Ships and you can see the guy that came up with the idea and what some of the actual ships looked like. And it was successful. Less ships were bombed and the UK was able to get in supplies. So again, that is a picture book you should check out. It's located in the 900s. 
The next picture book is Liberty Arrives. And again, you're like, really a picture book? Yes, really a picture book. Look at all the words on these pages. You've got to read this picture book. It is all about the Statue of Liberty. And there's some really interesting facts in here. I read this book and I learned some things about the Statue of Liberty and like who built it, how they paid for it, um, the struggles that they faced trying to get it built. And I learned a lot of information. So you should totally check this one out as well. This is located in the 900s. And then I want to go back to this book. So this book is on the dogwood list. Now during our like a couple weeks ago whenever we were home because of all that cold weather and stuff I got cozy got a blanket and read one of the books that is on the Mark Twain or excuse me Truman list this year. It's called Lifeboat 12. So whenever I first looked at this I'm like well I don't know it's probably a story about kids like on an island or something. I don't know I don't really want to read it. I could not have been more wrong you guys. This book was awesome and I think you would like it too. So it takes place during World War II um, which is the war that involved um, Hitler and the Nazis and Germany and what happened is there was kids, this is based on a true story, it says it right there, so there was kids that were living in England and their families were really worried because they knew that Germany was getting ready to come over and start bombing England and start taking over. And so the families were like, well, we don't want anything to happen to our kids. So they decided to ship their kids off to a safe place during the war and then bring them back when the war was over. If you've ever read the book, The War That Saved My Life, this is the same concept. In The War That Saved My Life, they shipped them off to like a farm, like in the northern part of the United Kingdom, to where they were safe. But in this book, they shipped the kids off, literally on a boat, they shipped them to Canada. And the kids would stay with a relative, or they would stay with like a foster family during the war to stay safe, and then return to their families when the war was over. Well, spoiler alert, these kids get on a boat to go over to Canada, and the boat gets torpedoed, which kind of goes back to this, but this was World War One. So the boat gets torpedoed, and so the kids are on this boat, and they're stuck out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, really, really cold. If you're familiar with the Titanic, that's where the Titanic sank, was in the Atlantic Ocean, really, really cold. And so this book reminds me of a mix of the war that saved my life and kind of the Titanic. Like, there were similarities in what happened. Um, it's a great story about kids surviving, and cool part, it is a novel in verse. I love those kind of books because you can read them really quick. So this just captivated me. I read this book in one day. I sat down and was like, oh my gosh, this is so good. So I read the whole book in one day. I loved it. Then I saw the Dogwood list. And guess what book is on there? Torpedoed. So this book is all about this. Just this is 100% true story, facts, numbers, data. Whereas this, they kind of make up a couple parts just to make it interesting. That's why it's fiction instead of nonfiction. So there's some parts that are kind of exaggerated a little bit to make it a better story. Whereas this is just 100% true facts about what happened. And so the kids that are mentioned in here are in here because these were real kids that it happened to. So this book, oh, I really want to read it, but I'm going to put it on the shelf and let one of you have it first, just to be fair, so I might try to read it over the summer. But it is called Torpedo, the true story of the World War II sinking of the children's ship. Doesn't that kind of look like the Titanic on the front? Yeah, I, that kind of sucked me in too because I find the Titanic very fascinating. So you can see it's got quite a few words, but don't let it scare you. It looks thick and you're like, oh, that's too, too much to read. No way. It is a captivating story and I know it'll suck you in. And again, this is on the Dogwood list. So teachers have recommended this. Students have recommended this. This is a good book. This is not one of those books that you're going to start reading and be like, this is so boring. Okay, trust me. You want to check this book out. It is located in the 900s. So I hope I've given you some ideas of some nonfiction to check out this month, whether that is a book from the Dogwood list or a picture book. That might be something different you never checked out before. So check out that nonfiction section and here's some new books I want to tell you about. Yay! 
In comedy this month, we got in one new book called Pie in the Sky. It reminds me a lot of Diary of a Wimpy Kid because it's got a bunch of cool pictures. In science fiction, we got the latest in the Hunger Games series called The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes and Where She Fell. Two new books in fantasy this month. The first one is called A Wish in the Dark, and it kind of reminds me of the people of Sparks in the City of Ember and Wings of Fire. In action and adventure, we got a new book called Spy Runner. This book takes place during the Cold War. In mystery, we got in a new book called Trace, and this is a book that I really want to read. Um, it's about a kid whose parents are in an accident and killed, so he goes to live with his aunt in New York. And when he's in New York, he goes to the public library in New York, and he likes to sit in the library and read. And one night when he's in the library, he sees a little boy with really old clothes on that are really tattered, like old and disheveled. And he can see through the little boy, and the little boy is a ghost. So he finds a ghost in the library, one I really want to read. Next in mystery is called The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane. This is about a girl um, whose dad disappears, and her mom is, like, really depressed and doesn't really want to be her mom. So she ships her off to a private school in England, and when she gets there, it's kind of a weird, like, private school, and there's weird messages on the walls, and she can't figure out what's going on. And she thinks that this school might have something to do with why her dad disappeared. So it's one big mystery. The first book in realistic fiction this month is actually historical fiction. It takes place in 1805 uh, in a Native American tribe. And the little girl that this is about, she is deaf. Almost every single person on the island and in her tribe is deaf. And so she communicates through sign language. And there's a scientist that comes to the island that wants to figure out why almost the whole island is deaf. So he starts to do science experiments and things go real bad real quick. Next in realistic fiction is Up for Air. It's about a girl swim team. The unsung hero of Birdsong USA. This song is a, or excuse me, this book is a nominee for Mark Twain Award next year. And it reminds me a lot of Walking with Miss Millie. Stand on the Sky is a new one we got in. And the next one, The Village of Scoundrels. This is one I want to read. It takes place during World War II, and it's about ordinary citizens in a French town that take in Jewish children that have escaped from concentration camps. And the people in the town keep them safe from the German police officers. Where the Heart Is is the other one in realistic fiction we got in. And the cover's blue, so you know it's probably going to make you cry. Also, The Mighty Heart of Sunny St. James, King and the Dragonflies, and the next one looks pretty good, Orphan Eleven. My Kind of Paradise is about a girl that gets in trouble and has to work at a library as her punishment, but to me, that doesn't sound like punishment. I, Cosmo is a new one. The cover is blue, so you're probably going to cry. It reminds me a lot of Maxie's Secrets. The Humiliations of Pippi McGee, Planet Earth is Blue, The Runaways. This one looks kind of interesting. It's about a kid that like breaks his grandpa out of a rest home and they kind of run away together. Prairie Lotus is a historical fiction book. It takes place in 1880 and the main character is Chinese and she struggles because no one else in her town is Chinese. The Everything I Have Lost is written in journal form, and it has a lot of words in Spanish. The last couple ones in realistic fiction is Extraordinary Birds, Feathers, and the last one is Song for a Whale. It is a Mark Twain nominee for next year. Four new books and graphic novels this month. The first one is Best Friends. It is the sequel to Real Friends. The next one is called Rocket to the Moon, and it has a lot of facts in it about our journey to the moon. The next one is This Was Our Pact, and the last one is about a man named John Muir. He was very big into nature. Kind of reminds me of like a Johnny Appleseed type. Our last category this month is nonfiction. The first book is called A Sporting Chance. It is about the Paralympic Games. 
Next is superlative birds. How we got to the moon. This is the 50th anniversary of our moon landing. Amelia Lost. It's a book all about Amelia Earhart. Fatal Fever. This one's pretty cool. I read it. It is about a lady that had the nickname Typhoid Mary, and she spread around the typhoid disease to a lot of different families and did not even realize it. Mummies Exposed has mummies from all over the world, not just Egypt. Born to Fly, I talked about that one earlier in the video, as well as Torpedo, the one that goes with the book Lifeboat 12. And Picture Books, Seashells, I showed you that one earlier, as well as Liberty Arrives. And the last one, my favorite picture book, Dazzle Ships.